in the summer of 2018, in the coastal paradise of Wellfleet, Massachusetts, Arthur Medici was riding his boogie board with a carefree spirit. But the joyous moment was abruptly disrupted when a massive shadow loomed beneath him. In a matter of seconds, the waters that had brought Arthur so much joy turned into a realm of primal terror. What happened to Arthur Medici? How does a single incident challenge our understanding of the natural world? Join us on a journey of exploration and reflection as we unravel the complexities of sharing our oceans with some of nature's most fearsome creatures. Newcomb Hollow Beach, nestled in the coastal beauty of Massachusetts, boasts a serene setting that belies the dangers lurking beneath its inviting waters. Known for its picturesque views and inviting waves, this beach holds a special allure for surfers and beachgoers alike. However, beyond its calm nature, Newcomb Hollow Beach holds an intriguing duality, a place where human enjoyment meets the untamed realm of nature. And it was Arthur Medici who had to face the wrath of the ocean. Medici was from Brazil and moved to Revere where he lived with his aunt and uncle for four years. The engineering student had recently finished his summer classes and was planning to propose to his friend, Roach's sister, Emily, with rings he had custom made in Brazil. Arthur Medici was a young man who found his greatest joy amidst the crashing waves and salty air. A passionate surfer, Arthur's days were spent riding the ocean swells with a zest for life that was infectious. With his sun-kissed hair and never-ending smile, he was a familiar face on the shores of Newcomb Hollow Beach. Beachgoers saw the Bunker Hill Community College student riding three to four foot waves with Rocha, who said that the pair often took trips down to the Cape and Rhode Island. These two guys with boogie boards and fins were doing all these cool tricks, doing flips, spinning backwards, Wendy Rennert, a person who was at the beach, said. So, how did it all start? The sun had just started to set when Arthur and his friend Isaac Rocha pulled into a hotel along Route 6A in Wellfleet. After checking in, they grabbed their gear and headed for nearby Newcomb Hollow Beach. Still, they liked Newcomb Hollow because it was relatively deserted except for the occasional member of the close-knit surfing community who had welcomed them with a smile. But that day, the conditions were ideal, and they were excited to be back. As soon as his boogie board touched the water, Medici put on a show for his young friend, performing flips and 360-degree spins. Rocha was still a beginner, but he had a patient teacher. He watched as Medici showed him where to place his hands in order to balance himself. You need to understand the rhythm of the ocean, Medici instructed. They surfed until nightfall, floating in the ocean and watching the sun, with its orange and pink hues, dip below the steep cliffs behind the beach. The following morning, Medici and Rocha got up early, had a quick breakfast, and left for Newcomb Hollow. As soon as they had positioned their beach umbrellas, Medici ran like a child into the waves, piling up sand in the process. It didn't take long for Medici to catch the wave of his dreams. He started paddling to the top of a fantastic wave he had just noticed rising on the horizon. He then positioned his board with an angle towards the shore, hooked the wave's shoulder at a sharp angle, and rode it all the way to shore before vanishing in the smashing froth. Neither Medici nor Rocha, however, knew what lurked beneath the surface of the ocean. As Arthur Medici was enjoying the calm waters on his boogie board, Suddenly, the scene of leisure turned into a heart-stopping nightmare when a great white shark, estimated to be 13 to 15 feet in length, attacked. The predator's powerful jaws clamped down on Arthur, inflicting severe injuries to his legs and causing significant blood loss. The shock of the event rippled through onlookers, transforming the beach's atmosphere into a scene of frantic urgency. Beachgoers and first responders rallied, working swiftly to pull Arthur from the water and staunch the bleeding with tourniquets. More than a dozen beachgoers scrambled to help carry Medici to safety after he was bitten on both legs. Isaac Rocha was in the water near Medici when the attack happened. He says he and the victim were like brothers. It's something that never passes your brain, your mind, you never think about that. Isaac Rocha, the 16-year-old friend of Medici from Everett who dragged Medici to shore after the attack, told a newspaper. It was just horrible, the worst feeling in the world. He was screaming and then I saw like a shark tail, Rocha said, and I swam to him as fast as I could at that moment. I dragged him back to the shore and I got a boogie board strap and I kind of tied it around his thigh to try to stop the bleeding. 
he was pulled from the water and received emergency first aid, including CPR before he was brought to Cape Cod Hospital in Hyannis. Despite the valiant efforts of those on the scene and the subsequent medical attention he received, Arthur's injuries proved to be far worse as his femoral arteries were severed. He tragically succumbed to the injuries at Cape Cod Hospital that same day. It was the first fatal shark attack in Massachusetts since 1936 and came a month after a New York man was bitten by a great white shark in nearby Truro. But how did the people of Wellfleet take this news? But before that, dive into the world of sharks by subscribing to our channel and get ready for a tidal wave of thrilling content that will leave you hooked. The tragic shark attack on Arthur Medici in 2018 served as a sobering wake-up call for the coastal community of Wellfleet, Massachusetts. The Cape Cod community finds itself in a contentious debate over how to address the presence of great white sharks. One side, represented by Barnstable County Commissioner Ron Beatty Jr., called for extreme measures including the killing of these sharks. Beatty's initial proposal included placing baited drum lines with hooks near popular Cape Cod beaches to catch and potentially kill great whites. However, there's another perspective represented by the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy. They oppose Beatty's approach and advocate for more humane and less violent methods to ensure people's safety. Their focus is on raising awareness and providing information to beachgoers. They developed the Sharktivity phone app to keep people updated about shark sightings near popular beaches. They also support increased signs and, when necessary, temporary beach closures as safety measures, even though these actions can have negative impacts on local businesses. In the aftermath of Arthur Medici's tragic encounter with a great white shark, the local community experienced a heightened awareness of the potential presence of these apex predators in their waters. Information and understanding are surely key, but even the most experienced swimmers and divers were nervous about the increasing number of great white sharks. Barry Clifford, an explorer who won worldwide recognition for finding the Wida, a pirate ship from the 18th century, in the waters off Wellfleet in 1984, thinks he has spent half his life underwater. Sharks can't get under you on the ocean floor, he explains, but it's quite another to be splashing around on the top, especially in shallow water where sharks can mistake you for a seal. At this time, I would never even consider swimming off the Cape or allowing my kids or grandchildren to do so. The presence of prey like seals and smaller fish, seasonal migrations of both sharks and their prey, and the interplay of currents and tides. Environmental conditions such as upwellings can further attract sharks by creating an abundant food source. But did you know that sharks don't like to eat humans? Surprised, right? Contrary to popular belief, sharks do not actively seek out humans as prey. Most human attacks are mistakes due to poor water visibility. The majority of shark species have diets primarily composed of fish, seals, sea lions, and other marine creatures. When shark attacks on humans occur, it is often a case of mistaken identity. So, what would you do if a shark is coming towards you? Let us know in the comments.